Hello and welcome to Slice of Desperation, a Star Wars adventure. I am here with my good friends, Jim and Chris, and I am GM Matt in a hat. And today we are going to get back into our Star Wars campaign. Uh, we've had a lot of stuff going on and uh, we're happy to be back. Um, I'm especially happy to be back because I've planned out the rest of the campaign, everything's all shiny. And uh, today we are continuing on uh, tracking a, uh, a band of um, uh, starfighters known as, uh, as spearheads. They are prototype A-wings um, and they have been stolen from the planet Tamarzan and we are tracking them down, trying to get them back so that the Planetary Defense Force can uh, operate uh, at their full capacity. And so we are in our ship, um, which I have on screen for you now, and we are in space. We are tracking the, this, uh, this engine that has a specific um, radiation signature and uh, to make a long story short, uh, we have tracked uh, this um, uh, these engines to uh, what seems to be uh, a hastily thrown together base. Uh, we can we can see it on our scanner, but we're obviously not approaching just yet. Um, it does not look like. Um, uh, it's been here especially long time um, there's certainly not that much of a signature but we can see that there's something something there and we can get some scans before we get too much closer obviously we are a little bit um, not nervous but just we, we you know we have our heads strapped on correctly we know that we could possibly come under attack uh, but um, at this stage that hasn't happened. So um, why don't um, you guys introduce yourselves for those people that may not have seen this stream just yet um, and introduce your characters, what, what you look like and uh, what it is um, that you, uh, your, your goals in life, I guess, and what it is you're thinking uh, and feeling as as we're getting closer to finding these um, these stolen A wings. So I'm going to go to Chris and then to Jim, and we will um, launch right in. So um, go ahead, guys. Okay. Well, um, I am Chris Johnson. I am playing Lyneth Fabeck. She is a Bothan trader. Um, she is feeling a bit like we might be in over our heads yet again. And <laughs> she's um, finding herself far from where what she thought she'd be doing <laughs> at this stage in her life. She's, um, you know, she's a trader. She is a sort of a respectable businesswoman. And all of a sudden she's running around shooting people and chasing down stolen ships so yeah definitely not really what you thought you'd be doing um but that's okay um excellent really good uh and so jim hey hey i'm jim i'm playing the soliston chief um i am a uh, a collector of items maker of things i want to be the most uh, notab no noticeable, there's the words I'm trying to get out, um, creator, period, of just stuff. I want a Jeef brand. I want my own line of droids. I want my own line of tools and weapons and scanners and everything technical. And whether that means I've got to, you know, have the brains to come up with that on my own, or uh, just the skill to take your ideas and steal them before you can market them. I want to do all of that. Um, I'd like to fly a little bit. Um, unfortunately, though, I'm 
going along more the lines of the uh I feel like I'm kinda had to take up the, the mantle of uh the gun in our group and <clears throat> excuse me. And not that Jeef is too uh, upset with that. Jeef kind of looks at it in the same way as, hey, this is just another way to, uh, another avenue, another skill that I can use to get the things that I need to want, uh, need to, well, need to get so that I can make myself the best that there is at uh, all of this, <laughs> in all honesty, for everybody else, menial things that I'm so just hyped up on. Um, yeah. Awesome. All right. Um, yeah. So you, you, like I said, you're getting close. Um, your um, your shipmates are um, are giving you some readings that are uh, that they're getting. Um, so mostly this would be Philic, um, who's sort of uh, siphoning through uh, what they can see on the scanner, and what they can see is uh, this hastily thrown together. Um, base of some description uh, it has a number of ports and uh, more of a worry perhaps uh, they actually scan that there might actually be some mines uh, space mines that are uh, sort of um, in this area around this um, this base and so if we were to get um, closer uh, that might be an issue um, we haven't tried to communicate with them yet uh, but we can do so we know that um, it was oh, we're, we're fairly sure it was rebels who stole these ships uh, so and we don't have a bad relationship with rebels at this stage um, we we definitely have done some good stuff for Ferrakaya, who's back on um, the Appando, but we are in a totally different sector of space right now uh, to her, and pretty sure that she's not really involved in in what these guys are doing. Um, rebels operate in cells, and a lot of the time there's no communication between these cells, um, especially so far away. Um, so. Uh, what it is? What is it that you guys would like to do? What What is your plan of, of action here? Um, your goals. Um, you don't necessarily have to come up with a, a detailed plan. Just just the just the surroundings as to what you're feeling like is a good, good sort of course of action, uh, and we can sort of peg out exactly what that might look at, look like. Well, after uh, the issue with the pirates um, and me kind of shooting from the hip and not seeing that we're working together that way, Jeep, uh, I'm really not thinking that planning is necessarily one of the skills I've yet to acquire to help me in my uh, in, in my endeavors. Okay. Uh, I think... Um... Mineth would be thinking uh, probably that we'd need to figure out something about the layout of this place before we go in doing anything. Right. Uh, so basically what this facility is uh, is an outer, an outer circle um, that houses um, lots of rooms and basically this circle is uh, in its center uh, is like a, um, a, a couple of bubbles beneath uh, the center of it and that houses like the engine and the life support and that sort of thing of this effectively small space station um, so it's a, a basically a ring uh, all connected into that central hub. Um, and yeah, that's, and the ring is pretty big. We're talking about um, that there would be uh, at least four or five decent sized rooms uh, wide. Um, and then that continues on 
around this giant big circle. Um, so it, it, it's not especially huge, um, but it's a decent size, especially for something that's been obviously create like put together out here. Um, so and yeah. can, can we tell where the like the spaceports are here and stuff? Uh, as far as like um, on, on the space station, do you mean? Mm -hmm. Like where they might be hiding the. Uh, yeah. Um, so there's like four, four docks, um, and you can sort of say north, south, east, west kind of deal, um, and you know you're not able to see what's inside of them. Mm -hmm. um, any one of them could have them. There might be. They're not especially huge. Again, this is a fairly small space station. You don't think that all of them would necessarily fit into one dock. Um, so you think they might be spread out a little bit. Um, okay. Astelia is kind of like, well, we haven't got a bad reputation with these guys. We're not close enough that if we make communication with them and they don't like us, that we wouldn't be able to get away. Like, so, so we're, we're far enough away that we have we have the advantage as far as if, if they launched fighters at us, we're not, you know, we're just going to be able to get away before they can get to us. Um, so she's kind of leaning, leaning towards maybe making contact and, mm -hmm. and, and chatting oh, with yeah. them and saying, like a... look, this is, this is who we are. Even if we bluff them and tell them a lie about necessarily what we're doing here, uh, perhaps that's a way. Maybe we tell them the truth and just say, "Hey, look, we're just we're just here to get back someone else's property." <laughs> um, maybe right. we tell them the truth um, and we can chat it out. But, uh, that might go badly, and maybe they will put the base on alert. But then we can sort of go, "Okay, this is the situation. Maybe we need backup. Maybe." I don't know, um, but but yeah. So she's leaning towards communicating, whether it be mm -hmm. lies or truth. Um, but again, the decision really, because she's, you know, at this stage more of a non-player character. Um, you know, you yeah. guys really have the have the driving stick um, as to uh, you know what what we decide in the end. You we can you know continue to scan and have more detailed scans we need to be a little bit closer than we are but we wouldn't need to be like in the minefield or or in danger uh to to do that <clears throat> and i think so menith um would be of the same mind as estelia mm -hmm. on that especially considering that so far we we have managed to have good relations with right uh with folks and that can be followed up on or or whatever so yeah they, they uh, would have some sort of communications to get in touch with other rebel cells you know so we think that that's possible right uh and we weren't if i remember correctly we're not actually tasked with doing anything but figure out where these are right they're not uh, in the end in the end they do want them back um, but if we were to locate them and then report back and say, Hey, look, this is where they are. We don't know what to do. Maybe they, they would have backup for us. Um, okay. but obviously the, the lion's share of their good, excuse me, their, or their better A-wings, they don't have. So they're, they're just operating on, they'd just be operating on older technology, which is fine. I mean. But uh, you'd, you'd assume that they would maybe be able to send a small squadron, uh, if anything. You know, if it turned out to be fighting, it would probably be five or six um, standard A-wings that they'd be able to send um, to, to support us. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, yeah, so I definitely be thinking that 
honesty is often the best policy and you know we might as well you know try to handle this in a diplomatic manner <laughs> and hope you know because we also wouldn't want word to get around that maybe we're you know, we don't want to affect our relationships with other yeah groups. yeah and we don't want to be flying around with multiple enemies <laughs> um yeah. all right uh what is chief thinking uh, are you thinking kind of the same thing least hear out what they have to say uh or um, Jeef is Jeef does not like the idea of working with the rebels mm -hmm. um, kind of the way his th thought process I'm thinking you know if we fly under the radio radar if we just keep doing what we're doing the Imperials look at us as good citizens mm -hmm. cool yeah. If we side with the Imperials, if we work with the Imperials, do some favors for the Imperials, cool. We're still just doing our jobs, and nobody looks at us as anything worse. We're just trying to make a buck. If we work for the Rebels, the whole galaxy is against us. Right. Uh, if that's found out, anyway, yeah. Right. And, um, Jeeves. Chief is not above telling a lie, but even though he doesn't like it, he's more at this point willing to see where it goes. Right. Because um, so far, really, the only rebels we've dealt with, Jeeves had to, you know, shoot up to beside him. So. Okay. Um, okay, let's let's see what see happens. what they say. Um, right. So yeah, we we send a message uh, in there and we say, look, this is who we are. This is why we're here. We tell the truth, um, and uh, we get a message back, and it basically says, um, we're gonna you know follow up um, who you've said sent you as well as who you say that you are, i.e contacting uh the near pando uh rebel cell and we'll get back to you um so you're sort of sitting in your ship for <laughs> about <laughs> sort of 20 minutes half an hour or so just sort of going we don't know what's gonna happen <laughs> they haven't really said anything and then they break the silence and they get back to us and they say all right yeah we have uh definitely established that you are who you say you are and yeah we'd like to talk about it more um we can um set the mines that are around our station to um to not go off uh around your ship's signature uh, we're not willing to turn them completely off because we don't know who's going to show up but we will uh, will basically effectively turn them off for your ship, um, and if you just come to the the South Bay, which is the closest one to you, um, you can you can feel free to dock there. Um, we are, we understand that you may not trust us, nor do we necessarily trust you. Um, but we're willing to have a chat about it. Um, if there's anything further that we can do to uh, make this easier for you, let us know. Um, but at this stage, I think, you know, coming and having a chat uh, would probably be the best. We're not really willing to talk over communication channels um, just because there's been some issues surrounding that understandable uh we will um i look around uh just make sure nobody's strongly objecting right and um so the crew is kind of on they're, they're like cautious 
but they're they're like okay that sounds to us like a plan they're gonna have pretty high alert as far as scanning for potential you know betrayal um you know and they're ready to like you know to get us out of there if if things go badly um but as you start to fly toward the the space station there's absolutely no sign of or betrayal or, or anything like that uh, all of the mines uh, seem inactive to you um, you can see them blinking but they don't move towards you or the ship um, you know no, no no guns are firing everything seems fine uh, you can see coming up uh, through the viewfinder and that sort of thing that um, indeed the, the the southern dock is preparing to have uh, some someone dock um, there's there's some activity there and so it doesn't seem like anything's afoot um, are we happy to 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 finish that docking procedure we finished the docking procedure uh, and uh, you guys are met with um, with a representative of the rebels. Uh, one second, while I find her name, and um, yeah, uh, this is Takala Hensier, and Takala uh, basically um, uh, she greets you. Uh, she's a dark-skinned uh, human or near human. You're not entirely sure. She looks mostly human, but there might be something else there. Um, and uh, but yeah, she she would she would uh, she would greet you as as the airlock sort of uh, opens, and she would say, "Ah, oh, right this way. Um, we've prepared a. We've got we've got you know a." a place that we can talk privately and she would lead you um, past several of these rooms where you know there's a decent um, decent crew on this um, on this small space station uh, we're not talking massive numbers but you know sizable you're talking probably just from what you see and extrapolating those numbers out, you think maybe there might be up to three or four small squadrons worth of staff here on this um, space station, which is significant. Um, and yeah, so sh they lead you to a, a, a pleasant room. Um, it's sort of, a, you can, it has like a, translucent kind of um, floor where you can look down and see the spinning rings of the the engines and so forth um, down below um, and the the you know the doors can close in case you get you know seasick or anything like that um, but at this stage um, yeah uh, they sit you down they've got refreshments available and they sort of say okay um, Thanks for communicating with us and letting us know who you are and being on, um, well, it seems like you're being honest and I don't know why you would say that you're here to get them back um, if, if you weren't um, being honest. Um, so, thanks. Um, so, um, we, uh, let us tell you, um, like we, we've spoken to Farakaya uh, in the last sort of 15, 20 minutes. It took us about 10 minutes to, to, to get in contact with her. Um, and she's given us a, a few, I, I hope you don't mind, a few just very brief details uh, about about you guys. Um, just so, just to give us a bit of an idea about who, who, we're, who we're doing business with. Um, and we'd like to tell you our side of the story um or at least the reality of what's going on um thank you um 
So, it turns out that um, the money that's you that was used to purchase these um, these new um, spearheads, uh, that money uh, was uh, part of the profits to a scheme to ship criminals off to Marzan to the slave colonies in T12. Uh, so what the what the um, planetary defense force are doing is they're they're basically getting rid of all crim all of the criminals, especially hardened criminals, from Tamazan to try and make it a better place. But they're selling them into slavery. Yeah. Yep. I mean. So then, what would be the alternative for these criminals? Would they be in a prison somewhere, being forced to work on something? Slavery, uh, anyway. So, <laughs> um, there's a hard like if they were innocents, you know. May, may, I guess maybe I'd have a, a softer heart to the situation if they were innocents. But they're hardened criminals. Well, as... I mean, softer criminals might be some of my friends. Might be helpful. Right. Hardened criminals, I don't know if I can... I don't know how I feel about that yet. I mean... Yeah, fair enough. Is this um, bad? The issue that we have is that the criminal system, or at least the justice system, on Tamazan is especially harsh. Uh, so they are, uh, they are, um, pretty cutthroat when it comes to any crime. And when I say any crime, I mean someone might steal a loaf of bread from a local bakery and they don't find them, they jail them. And from those jails, a good percentage gets sold into slavery. And that's kind of our issue with them. So... so they're not necessarily hardened criminals. They're... They, that, 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 that's, that's how they're doing this without getting noticed. Is they're saying, these are hardened criminals, let's get rid of them. But um, that's not the reality of the situation. The reality of the situation is all of their criminals are being sent. And well, a lot of them are being sent for effectively nothing. Um, well, that's a bummer. Anyway, so we thought that, uh, you know... Uh, we could use these for better purposes, so we stole them. And we're refitting them. Um, Tell me more. <laughs> uh, well, you can talk to our, um, our master engineer, um, if you like, and, and he'll sort of... Um, he'll sort of detail... Uh, everything that's going on uh, as far as um, uh, what what that refit looks like um, and yeah uh, you'll be able to get some information from them um, one second so uh, they're turning them into the RZ-1 A-Wing Interceptor RZ-1 also known as the RZ-1 A-Wing Starfighter. Uh, it's a wedge-shaped Starfighter. Um, yeah. So, yeah. Um, 
So these, um, so uh, they have two sublight engines. Uh, we've fitted them with surplu uh, surplex Z9 deflectors. They have uh, Borstel RG9s uh, as their armaments and uh, the Dimec HM6, which is, as you know, a pretty good concussion missile. And as you're also aware, um, they do have those special engines. And so they are capable of uh, 1300 uh, KPH. Those specs are pretty damn good, Chief. What do you plan on doing with them, if you don't mind me asking? Flying them. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, we want to sort of start retrofitting our our fleets with them. Uh, we're sort of taking um, taking point on uh, getting getting the. Um, uh, the conversion sorted. Uh, we've got our own engineers on it. Uh, we're working with Kuwa uh, to make that happen. Um, but that's kind of privileged information. And uh, yeah, we um, we've been told that you're that you're um, reliable and that. Um, yeah, this, this information would probably not get passed on. You can be sure that if that information does get passed on, that there will be repercussions. Understood. Um, so I that's what's... From, having, from still finishing typing in all the specs into my data, data pad. <laughs> right. Now, um, I don't want to do it. okay. As a clincher, uh, now it goes a little bit deeper than what we're saying, and uh, we'd like to turn to a personal note now. And she turns and faces Mineth, and she says, "You're Mineth Fayback, correct?" Yes, that is correct understand that your parents are missing yeah that is true i'm hoping to find some leads on their whereabouts do you know something about that i have reason to believe that we do know something about that we we believe we're not a hundred percent sure but more like 95 percent sure that they have been taken to one of these slave colonies. Uh, and we believe that that's happened uh, because of Durga the Hutt. We believe that Durga, that either the, your parents were involved with him or they've done something and he's taken offense to it. We believe that Durga, uh, has uh, imprisoned them amongst his slave colonies in T12. It's not the first time I've heard Durgan's name used in conjunction with my parents. Disturbing, but... So, I'm not sure if you're completely familiar with what I mean Durga's got his grubby little hands in lots of things but his most sort of uh, sacred thing if you can call it that for such a disgusting creature is uh, he's got a bit of a runestone operation going And uh, we think that perhaps that's how your parents got involved. Uh, obviously, uh, your family wasn't 
from anywhere near Durga's operation, but rune stones get shipped all the way from the planet Ruin uh, to T12, which is a significant distance. Uh, they get smuggled in, and we think that either your parents found out about the operation and they're trying to be silenced, or maybe, I don't know. We don't fully know the details, we just know that that's probably why they've ended up up there and nowhere near home. Um, huh. Uh, don't suppose you have any clue which slave operation they may have been? Uh... Okay, well, that's... That's a bit more difficult. Uh, you see, there are three planets all in fairly close proximity to each other. And these planets have... Uh, two of them have fairly sizable slave populations. Uh, and the last one is like a haven for criminals. So, uh, the last one's like a, I'm sorry, can you repeat that last? The last one is a haven for criminals. So, it's very difficult to know which of the two slave planets they would be at, but if we were to, like, hesitate a guess, uh, we think probably it's going to be. Um, uh, the the one which has got the religious um, uh, the religious side uh, kind of covered um, to give you a little bit more information about that let me just grab my info here they can tell you a little bit about it they don't know huge amounts uh, but I'll tell you what they do know as I just grab my notes here. Um, so uh, let me type in the three planets uh, okay. into here. So we have, I'll go from west to east. So westmost planet, uh, slave planet is called Elysia. Uh, the criminal uh, world is Pointer. And, and the eastmost slave planet is called Zugan. Zugan. Um, yeah, and they're sort of con con all, all very close um, to each other. Um, and we are in second. That's T12. It's uh, hot space. Yeah, got it. Just need to bring up that now tell you a little bit more about them. Sorry, I've got all these notes from all different stuff going on, uh, but they can tell you a little bit about these planets. What do we got? Hot space, here we go. Uh, planet Alessia is a tr tropical world. Um, the slave colony is dedicated to spice production and uh, is covered up by a religious retreat. We believe that they would be there. So basically the huts have this thing going that they've basically, um, they advertise it as a religious retreat, but it's not. Um, a good cover it's uh the the cult uh that they're basically um uh 
using is called the Cult of the One and the All. Cult of the One and the All. And they use this cult to basically trick people into coming there and becoming slaves. So that is, um, mm. that is Alessia. Uh, then we've got the others. Uh, one second. Where are we? Zugan, we don't really know much about. We just know that it is a slave colony world. And the last one, uh, Poita. Poita. It's used by slavers and smugglers as a refueling stop. And we believe that... Um, we believe that Jabba the Hutt has a presence there. Mm. Uh, and that that presence isn't exactly friendly with his other huts. Yeah, that they have a bit of a rivalry, let's just say that. And let's say that Jabba the Hutt's um, mil militia, if you can call them that, mercenaries, um, they 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 hunt uh, the priests on Alessia or so-called priests <laughs> to this uh, false false uh, religion slash cult. Uh, yeah, Jabba's uh, mercenaries hunt them for sport. Hunt the priests. Oh, man. <laughs> So it's pretty complex up there, um, but yes, that uh, planet Poiter—it's more of a more of a presence of Jabba the Hutt than um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, so um, that's what information they give you. Um, and they say, look, um, we, obviously we don't agree uh, with what's happening. Um, we rightfully or wrongfully um, have taken action. And look, to be real with you, and she sort of crosses her hands and lays back in her chair. She gets, to be real with you, um, these ships are completely completely unnecessary let me tell you and she she folds out a holographic projection of the um of the tamaz an defense forces um network of ships and we're talking a very significant number she lays it out and she just spreads it and it's like across the entire table right just like ships everywhere <laughs> and she's just like yeah um the word corrupt kind of strikes a, a true ring in this situation she says uh and this is why we've taken action uh, we we can use these ships uh, so we took them <laughs> it's, it's really simple uh, we can't afford them um, they can because of their little sweet slave deal going uh, and we don't think that's very um, humane stealing things possibly isn't humane but you know We, we can use them. Inhumane versus immoral. Immoral, hmm. yeah, exactly. So, look, our cards are on the table. And she, again, she sort of leans forward again. Our cards are on the table. We've told you what we know. We can, we can sweeten the pot here a little bit uh, if, if, if this flies under the radar. We, we have a few, a few things that we can... 
we can sweeten the pot with uh, if you're interested in, in letting us uh, have these ships. I'm interested in a sweet pot. <laughs> yes! Uh, your jeef. Um, yes, part of the sweet pot I'm pretty sure you're going to be very interested in. I, I like a sweet pot. I don't think it's going to take much to convince me. She says, um, I understand you, uh, you like, uh, building things. You like making stuff and having stuff. <laughs> That's an understatement. She's right. It's quite an understatement, actually. <laughs> you can see my, uh, trove. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, well, we can help you out. We we have a couple of uh, very. Say strong... no more. Okay. I'm in. <laughs> You're in. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, Estelia through this whole thing. Is she's shaking her head a little bit? She's like, okay. Why is everything more complicated than it needs to be? <laughs> why why does everything have a have an opposite dog. side of the coin? And what is the opposite side of the coin to these guys that they're not telling us now? Um so she's like, uh-huh, okay. Um <laughs> she's just looking at you guys going, I'm pretty sure there's an opposite side of the coin that's not being divulged here. Uh, as there seems to be an opposite side of the coin to everything else. <laughs> uh, but sure, look, if you wanna, if you wanna go, go in here, uh, she'll go along with it. Um, what, what's, um, in her thinking and saying? Carrot dangling. <laughs> An awful lot of carrot dangling going on around here. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what their Whoa. connection parents is but i this is the pg game though huh i said this is the pg game yeah let's not talk about dangling carrots dangling carrots too much yeah. <laughs> whoa <laughs> sorry uh, I mean, her, her ears kind of uh well she is kind of cat like so her you know her <laughs> her ears have kind of perked up so to speak with the um news of her parents so mm. you know and and she already uh leans a little toward the rebel side of the coin anyway uh so she's um she's kind of you know thinking along the lines that estelia is but at the same time she you know she's kind of um probably just as hooked with the carrot of her parents dangling as Jeef is with the carrot of the opportunity to play with the toys and maybe acquire some new new bits and pieces. Exactly, yeah. The rebels have some pretty nifty stuff. Let's be real. Yep. But Minif being Minif, she's she's not as quick to jump maybe as Chief. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm um, not gonna say sign me up just yet. She, well, you know, okay, let's hear. Let's and and you you and she, she'll see off. this. Like she'll she'll actually read this in you. She's a pretty insightful person. Uh, so she just swipes the the table, the holographic projection, and it sort of shifts. And she says, um, yeah. "I understand you like trade." <laughs> <laughs> it is my chosen profession that of my parents well you know what we're, we're, we've been looking for someone to uh, to facilitate some trade um, you know ship us the things that uh, that we need under the radar and uh, let me say there's quite uh, quite the the lucrative uh, job opportunity uh, you know, somewhere in the figure of well let's say lucrative 
you know how difficult a proposition that is in the given climate of the moment. Uh, yes. Yes, I do. <laughs> I am very, very well aware. She says. Um, yeah, well... Look, we wouldn't want you to get into any trouble. Um, but, uh, you know, a, uh, let's say a nameless face behind a computer screen could be very useful to us. What? Did you say my name? <laughs> no? Okay. Steady stream of useful work could be very nice to have, too. However, I won't... I'll be honest with you, I'm nervous about the potential enemy we make the moment we put our eggs in your basket. Okay. Um, I understand. Oh, look. You're free to go whenever you want. You're free to say no. Uh, look, we're not going to stop you. Um... We're going to keep our eyes on you, just in case any of this information leaves this room. Uh, you know, we, we need to protect ourselves. But you're free to go, you're free to say yes or no, you're free to accept any part or no part of what we're saying. Um, and... To be honest, not all of you need to say yes. Um, you know, uh, if you guys can come to an accord amongst yourselves, you know, that's fine. Um, so, um, Jeef is struggling right now because, um, it, like, it, it's really been played up everything I want, they're literally saying they'll give to me. I'm like, okay, cool. I'll work for you and throw you under the bus too. That's exactly how I'm thinking right now. Yeah. And I'll work for you and be happy to sell you out at any point. This is great because you'll pay me and then I'll be rewarded later and more. This is great. You'll give me stuff. I'll help you and I'll keep copies of all the stuff I give you. This is perfect. <laughs> and, yeah. and, I'll, and I'll just go around selling it to the highest bidder. I mean, you're also talking about Jabba and, and, and more huts. I'm like, this is this is a gold mine for me. <laughs> um, I would like, and normally I'm against asking for rolls. Yeah. May I make a discipline roll? Yes. Well, what is... To see if I... Because, like, this is really... They're offering the, uh, the sweetest pot that I've heard. Um, well, yet. That she's heard. Yeah. What exactly are you proposing? Well, it's going to be a little bit different for each of you. Um, we have here um, the uh, DNA scans from um, from a series of dog tags that uh, our friend uh, Estelia over here might be interested in. Uh, we have a relatively well-paying job on offer for Mina. Uh, and we have uh, our own tech and also some leads on some other tech for uh, for Jeef over here. Um, we can put you in touch with someone I'm pretty sure you're gonna get some good good uh good gear from um uh and so uh and for that i guess what we're asking is you go back to the planet and say either well what you say is up to you really don't give our position away 
don't tell them necessarily what we're doing. Tell them you couldn't find the ships. Tell them they were destroyed. Tell them I, I don't I don't care. Just we're not giving them back. So up to you. That that's what we're asking. That's what we're saying. And if you don't want to take this deal, that's okay. You can go back there and you can tell them that we have them, but know that that's going to lead to a violent situation. For who? You don't mean me, do you? Uh, I, well. <laughs> Us. <laughs> So what's this role I gotta make? All right. Um, so you're you're basically like uh, you're trying to determine ha how interested you are. Is this what you're doing? Am I able to? I guess I want to know. Am I gonna be able to? Walk away from this deal. Is this too sweet? Uh you have a choice <laughs> uh, yes but play, but also playing like yeah this is okay this is uh i say too good for me yeah i'd say uh knowing not only is there tech involved but there's also a contact that they've hinted at who is going to be very useful to you uh they haven't said who that is just yet because you haven't agreed uh, but uh, I'd say that this is hard with a setback um, just because there's so much on the table and the setback because this is who your character is you know. and one be okay yeah oh man Oh, man. I'm like, why are we talking about this? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. So, so, so for posterity, that's two fails and two threats. Beautiful. That's that's beautiful. Yeah. All right. So Chief's all Chief's in. So Chief's bad. like, so yes. <laughs> oh, and he drank just the Kool Aid. Final, just, just to also re just. I forgot a dice in there, but it was the setback, so it's gonna be worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Beauty. Well, All right. So, Mineth, you can see that Chief's pretty taken. Uh, Estelia's yeah. just like, whatever you guys do, I'm with you. Um. So what? What's Mineth gonna do? Or... Mineth can't resist uh, really the opportunity to grow as a trader, okay. and neither can she pass up the potential for figuring out where the heck her parents are and maybe having an opportunity to rescue them. So she's uh, she's in. Okay. They will give you uh all of the things so they'll give you um the coordinates to those uh planets um all of the information that they have um so real quick uh, <clears throat> let me uh, i know that showing you on the camera is not the best thing but it's basically the best i can do because i don't have anything digitally i've done everything on by hand So, so this this whole thing is T12, right? Uh, this here, uh, in in this area, this is all hot space, and zoomed in right at the top there uh, are the um, are the three planets that we're talking about. Now, this dotted line here is a trade line. This is the hyperlane that uh, gets used, and that's what the 
uh, empire are, are so you know bent on are these these dotted lines, and um, and the blue lines that you can see coming down are um, because uh, I'm gonna be um, that that's probably the the safest route to get there uh, because you don't want to go all this way through hut space that's that's like a death trap uh you want to come from from you know the the best angle you know <laughs> so the Bexel sector is down here and they're saying you know cut across rather than have the entire thing yeah and you don't want to get anywhere close to these lanes really i mean getting to these um to these planets is kind of in, in you know an intersection but you don't want to be crossing these lanes right because they're, they're patrol pretty well so this is probably your safest route right so yeah um so that's what you've got there um yeah so they give you that um they give you uh, the contact details of this um, of this contact that they have. It's not a rebel. Yeah, they put you in contact, Chief, or give you the contact details of. Second, while I find my stuff. Uh. A, an engineer named Bevel Lemelisk. Bevel Lemelisk was the designer of the first Death Star. Ooh. And he is in hiding because he is being hunted by none other than the Emperor. Uh, but we know where he is. <laughs> oh, this is tough. That guy's got some great brains, but at the same time, there's so much money that I could make. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. You could make a ton of money. Oh, oh my gosh. Uh, so well, that's a quandary for another time. I'll, I'll leave that with you. I'll leave that he's, with you. He's been sitting there, like, once they tell me who this person is, I was like, what? <laughs> and you, my eyes go crossed, and I just drool a little bit. Like, this is, I don't know what to do. Right. Uh, they are also giving you uh, another lead. So that's the so he's he's in the Hefi system of S fifteen. All right, H E F I Hefi system in S fifteen is this engineer. Uh, on top of that, they are giving you uh, they are giving you is that it. Sorry, I'm just looking at this stuff. What have we got? Ah, t -t 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 it is uh, down there, isn't it? 15? Yeah. Uh, Kyberon. Q. Yeah. Um. Ah, why can I not see it? 
<laughs> I've picked everything out here. Um, I will find it in a minute. Yeah, I'll come back to that. Yeah, there's yeah. another. There's another. Uh, there's another uh, lead, and basically, uh, it's this trader. Uh, so it's going to be probably useful for both of you, actually. Uh, this trader um, mostly buys and sells um, technological stuff. So he has everything. Um, I will get you his name and location when I find it. Uh, it's not important for me to find it right now. Um, but so you'll have that. You'll have, like I said, all of the details surrounding where your family is. Um, you have that. Um, yeah, and um, they let you guys go whenever you want to go. Um, you've agreed to the to the plan. Um, they're happy to let you go. Um, you think that probably they're gonna keep their eyes on you. Uh, not that they don't trust you, but you know they've told you some pretty sensitive information, and um, you know they've heard from Farakai that you're trustworthy, but they're not just gonna wash their hands of it. You know they they've got some investiture in this. Um, Alright, so uh, what's our next point of call? Do we do we now want to go back um, to um, to Marzan, um, knowing that mm, effectively we'd have to either lie or otherwise deal with that? What are we What are we doing next? Um. At a minimum, Minna thinks we should at least go somewhere else. Uh, maybe a couple other someplace else's. Following the lead. Tracking the, you know, so that... Ah, so you we like... have a trail going straight to one... Yeah, yeah. So you sort of fly around a bit to make mm -hmm. it... And then, didn't we... We were on a thing that ex that blew up last session, right? Right, yep. Yeah. We'd followed to there, so maybe going back there and kind of checking out the... Well, I think you guys got it working, right? Like, you got the ship working, they, they we... were able to get away, they were able to... Right? That, that's what happened? Right. Right, right, right. Yeah. So, yeah, you... I was trying to think about, like, plausible, you know, plausible... Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that. look, you've done them a favor. You saved them. So that, you know, whatever you ask them to to have as information, they, they will do because they owe you. Well. Yeah. So, yeah, we can get back in touch with them and tell them a story and say, can this mm -hmm. just be whatever? And they will do that, absolutely. You don't need to roll for that. Okay. Yeah, I'm thinking like, I don't know, maybe we can sell that they blew up in the hmm. explosion at the other place or, yeah. but I think at the very least we should follow, we should follow some leads. Yeah, make it look like we're actually mm -hmm. doing some work and then we come back empty handed. Is that kind of like the plan? Like we've, we've done a good amount of looking around and then we're like, yeah. we just couldn't. We, we had all of these other things ha happen, you know, we, we, we had this other ship that kind of blew up, we had all this other stuff going on, but we couldn't find them, right? That's, that's kind of, right. that, yeah. Okay. Right. All right. Cool. Well, that's my suggestion. Um, well, well, long story short, uh, if you guys want to just like cut to that, we can. Uh, again, we are in our ship for that, um, so, you know, if you want to talk to any of the crew, um, get to know anyone, you can. I, I don't know how important that really is. We can just get to the story, uh, if you like, um, because, I mean, we're really sort of saying, you know, you've traveled, you're getting to know these guys, 
they're getting to know you you're making relationships with them yeah unless you've got reason uh, you can you can always talk to them if you want that is basically what I'm saying uh, we make it back to Tamarzan look they they have you know obviously had patrols around they get the same information that you guys tell them back basically they, they everything cooperates um, they're not happy that you haven't been able to help them out but you know they say that they appreciate um, that you've gone to this amount of effort to, to try and find find them um, they appreciate the fact that you weren't able to um, they they say well you know if you hear anything let us know I guess um, disappointed would be the right word absolutely um, um, however now this leads us to another issue um, we were um, by proxy sent here from uh, near Pando as a favor to uh, Alaiha Khan's uh, uh, sorry uh, to find Alaiha Khan's as a favor to um, Skabath um, so while we've made an effort um, we don't know how uh, Skabath's going to react to us not being not fulfilling exactly what he was asking us to do but he didn't know the full extent to what we were doing anyway he's like a friend of mine's in in a bit of trouble go and help so yeah we can report back um so is there anything else that we want to do in this area is there anything else uh that you guys want to follow up um you don't have to roll for telling a convincing story because everything matches up um you can assume that um, it's effectively like spending a story point to make it happen. Um, it, they, they believe you. Uh, for some reason, I can't hear you at the second, Chris. Sorry. Sorry, I forgot. I was uh, muted. I. I'm just kind of looking at my notes to see um yeah I don't really I can't think of anything I don't know what Jeeves got okay uh well very good um so there's this little sort of cut right in in the movie where, uh, you know, there's this cutscene of the, the ship sort of flying through space, you know, scans of individual sectors, and, the, and, and we're like, oh, there's nothing here. It's pity that. <laughs> getting, back to the, getting back to the planet and sort of reporting back, we see, you know, the, the disappointment on Elijah's face. We sort of like, okay. We, we wrap that up. We um, go back to Chuzala use the gate to get back to near Pando and we're on our way to report back to Sigvath to say what basically what we've done and and all of that um so um what I quickly want to do is uh Yeah, um, so we're gonna so basically uh, the 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 camera sort of focuses on uh, near Pando, which we've seen like a dozen times. Cuts to the characters walking up to the camp of refugees that has been set up, um, and something's kind of uh, afoot. Um, you walk into camp and uh, you can hear um, uh, wailing, uh, crying out. Um, this seems odd. Um, you sort of come around one of the tents 
and um, and this is the scene now the, and, and it sort of pans in and shows you the scene shows the characters coming and 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 and, and the wailing comes through quite uh, penetrating and then uh, sort of flips to what you see and you see a uh, one of these Dathomirians um, uh, holding uh, or, or sort of holding back one of their children um, uh, and has her hands her, she's clearly a mother has her hands out um, her other hand out, out sort of um, like uh, pleading um, she's there's tears running down her face but she seems unable to move uh, her hand is out but and she can see that there's that she's trying to move but she can't and uh, and then uh, on the uh, on the other side of the scene we see Skavath who has a small child with him um, a female child who is, uh, the child is in his arms and is struggling trying to escape his arms Skavath sees you holds out his other hand and an invincible barrier basically stops you from being able to move and he then boards his ship uh, his one man Jedi ship and he flies away still with child in hand What's all this about? Um, the family of this child are beside themselves. Um, uh, finally, the mother will let the let the uh, let the younger child sort of free, um, who is just in tears, and the family seems to be in tears, um, and. Uh, this mother so sees you and she's like he stole my baby the, clearly it wasn't a baby but yeah but baby <laughs> baby <laughs> uh, probably around seven or eight years old ish um Meneth will put her hand on this woman's shoulder and, you know, try to be physically comforting. Um, why would he do that? What? Tell us. Tell us everything. She has no idea. Uh, she's like, I, why would anyone take anyone's child? I don't know. He's been only helpful since he got here, and now well, our child is gone. We need to get uh, her back. Skavath, is that me? Aren't we kind of busy? <laughs> Maybe? <laughs> Way to be uh, compassionate. <laughs> <laughs> Aren't we busy? Uh, do we need to walk away from this? Uh, Stelia um, is you've you've got your hand on the woman's shoulder. Stelia gravitates towards the child in this situation. Uh, you know a little bit of Stelia's past, and you know that. Um, her mother was uh, killed before her eyes and she was gone through a whole lot of trauma surrounding that uh, and that trauma was as a child and so she's gravitating towards the child in this situation um, going over trying to calm the sibling down um, so Okay, 
Okay. Skavath is a Jedi. Uh, yeah. Uh, one of the and... one of the only Jedi remaining after the Order. Do we? Would this be? Would it be common knowledge? Um, about force users, or is that beyond what we, um, the average citizen, would know? I think, um, I think your backgrounds are both of you are fairly connected. Uh, so I think, I think you would at least be familiar with force users, even if you maybe never met. You've heard about them. Okay. Uh, you know... You know that most of them are gone. Um, the fact that Skavar sort of saved these people was a bit of an anomaly, and you kind of knew that at the time, but yeah. it was, you know... It just happened. It was like, okay, someone's there and happens to be a Jedi. Um, how much about Jedi you know? Probably not heaps. Uh, it's probably... It's, the history is probably taught a little bit uh, in schools. So if you've got some sort of education, you would probably know about the Order, like Order 66. You'd probably know um, what happened, in, you know, in, in those wars and things like that. Um, um, you'd probably know that... You know, some of the historical, historical Jedi. Um, okay. You know, no Jedi hmm. really uh, survived, and I mean, Skavath told you a little bit of his story. You know that he was far, far, far away from the Order when it happened. Um, most of that was you know in the core worlds yeah uh, but you know the 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 order went out into the uh, outer rim and everything which is where um uh but he was skavath was beyond he he was almost in wild space so he he was nowhere near uh, when all of this kind of went down when, which is why he survived um so yeah that much you would know um i don't okay. think you would know how desperate he would be but maybe you could come to that um uh you know the reality of the situation you know to to like inform us as players is um there's 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 no jedi um so uh any jedi that still exist are looking for are looking for uh, Padawans are looking for young uh, possibles with high midichlorians or uh, mm -hmm. you know natural talent. Um, um, okay. I don't think your characters would know that side of it, but you would know okay. the history. Do you know what I mean? I'm trying to. I'm trying to yeah. inform us as players as well as. Yeah. 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 I just want to make sure I don't like abuse <laughs> I, I think I think we could ask some um, some questions that um, that seem that seem innocent like what was she doing what like things like that and get a good answer mm -hmm. um, so if we asked things like that um, you would get some answers from the yeah. mother saying that she was a very nimble um gymnast and that she would like you know even at eight nine years old um could you know balance on a one inch pole for like hours on end and things like this um and he he didn't uh he didn't explain anything he just took her he didn't literally ask you came at the end of the scene uh, so mm -hmm. you've walked in. He was yeah, so in the throes. Yeah, he was in the throes of take. No, he hasn't explained himself. Yeah. So, so that's what she's out. Basically, okay, grabbed the child, 
force held them, force held us, boarded the ship and flew away. This is in the last two minutes of scene like, that this has happened. Okay. This is like right now <laughs> in a like in in yeah. yeah. So there, imagine that wave of emotion. Someone's just you know that you've gotten to know over the last sort of month or couple of weeks has grabbed your child <laughs> yeah oh, man. and forcibly held you back and then flown off like this is kid this is right right in the moment i just uh, wow um Has he, has he, had he witnessed any, uh, what, what is her name? What, what's your name, sweetie? Uh, yep. I'll get that. Second. So many things here. Uh, grab that. Uh, grab that over there. Uh, do you mean the mother? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, because I'm her. Okay, uh, her name. Uh, her name is Leg Legia. Uh, you don't pronounce the U in this situation. Legia? Yeah. Legia, has, had he seen any of this innate talent witnessed any of this in your daughter yeah i mean uh they they used to you know um he, he was teaching her you know some you know he's been helping all of us he he's helped us uh you know found found this area and 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 make so he hung around a while i didn't yeah he's been he was... here like three weeks now yeah Okay. Um, yeah. So he's yeah he's he's helped them establish their home, their new home. I, I'm I'm so sorry, Legia. Yeah, I I know. Uh, actually, I can't even imagine how you must be feeling right now. But we'll get to the bottom of this. Some someone. We'll get to the bottom of this. We'll we'll get the authorities. We'll. Make a report. Uh. <laughs> and she kind of scowls at Jeep with his <laughs> like. I walk away and I head towards Skavath's, I don't know, room, tent, sure. bungalow. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to look around and before anybody has a thought, I want to try to pick it clean. Yeah, you can pick it clean. <laughs> at the same time, you know, I don't not necessarily caring about acting on it right now, but maybe if there's something in the in there that gives me a, a a clue or a hint of what's going on, maybe he was in a rush and left a journal. I don't know. Yeah. All right. Um, so yeah, I'll tell you what you find. Um, let me find it, and we'll get to that. Um, like I said, I'm not necessarily trying to find something to be an act of help. But I just like to know things. Yeah. Yep, for sure. That's perfectly fine. You know, we expect this. Alright, so you find, while this opens, you find um, a, a guard Shoto. which is the hilt of a lightsaber. You find a Lordian gemstone. Um, you find um, You find a curved hilt. Um, what else have we 
got. Cool. Uh, and um, and you find um, a series of um, tech items um, that probably were being used to create some sort of droid. Um, they're just parts, but it includes a power source, um, some wheels. Um, um, his one man transport, did it need a, a droid for astrogation or co pilot slot? Uh, probably, but, yeah. Uh, but uh, you, there wasn't there wasn't one in it, so you're thinking that okay. uh, some something has triggered him leaving. Possibly he's left all of this stuff. Um, none of his personal stuff is here. There's no um, there's no journal to speak of. Um, look, I'll uh, I'll give you a data pad uh, actually. I'll give you a data pad um, that you can siphon through. Um, but in that data pad, you find um, notes, biology notes mostly, um, and observations. Um, uh, one of those files is encrypted. And you can make a mechanics check or a uh, computer's check. Well, computers, not mechanics. Computers check to uh, to try and decode that. Um, um, okay. Um, but yeah, just uh, by biology, uh, biology observations are what you found. I'll just pack that stuff up into my satchel and. So effectively, um, effectively. You can, um, you can, uh, you can, I don't know if you've seen uh, Adventurers League and Treasure Points, but effectively mm -hmm. what I'm doing here is giving you sort of a treasure point, which is basically you can, you can, uh, try, you can say, find something that, um, that is, surrounding the kind of description that I've said like a little bit of droid tech um, what about that can be useful to you uh, in in the numerous <laughs> equipment things and you can have whatever that thing is um, whether you want to make a droid or whether you've got other stuff that you know of that you're like maybe one day I can have that maybe if it surrounds kind of similar something to that then you can have that if you don't know of anything you can search for it or I can search for it during the week okay yeah but you're into tech and stuff so I figured there's probably you probably got your eye on something out there that's probably similar to this so you can whatever that is you can have it <laughs> okay um yeah um data pad droid stuff none of his personal uh, gear so he's taking all like his armor and his lightsabers and stuff but uh, Stellion knows uh, that this gem and that hilt that's all stuff that you can use to create a lightsaber Does she need one? I'll make her one. She would need to make it because that's part of the process. Like you could help, but she like uh, the process of making a lightsaber requires attunement to the force and things like that. So, do I know that? <laughs> uh no. <laughs> You're like I'll so make you one. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure I can put this stuff together. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Uh, she's like, okay, um, not sure that you can do that, but yeah, okay. 
we'll we'll work on it together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> together. Yeah. I am completely uh, like I guffawed the thought that she'll help me. <laughs> Indeed. Totally not realizing that it's going to be the other way around. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, cool. Uh, so that's what you find in the tent. Uh, Mineth, while he's in the tent, I'm guessing, excuse me, um, I'm guessing that part of what you're probably going to be doing is trying to calm these people down. Uh, you, uh, because you, I'm assuming you stay outside, not go into his tent. Guessing? Oh, it's up to you. you. You tell me, rather than me. Uh, you're muted. You're muted. 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 Uh, okay. I don't know what's going on here. Maybe it's... I don't know. Is everything okay with this too? There we go. Okay, that was weird. It's I swear every time my cat starts dancing around up here, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but it's always a coincidence. Uh, anyway, I didn't catch what you said you assumed. I think you said that you assume I didn't go in the tent, which right. would be correct. Yeah, so you okay. like you're outside. Yeah, I think um I think I would yeah, just try to be comforting and calm him down and uh you know, kind of having that realization that may, now may not be the best time to get details. All right. And um and I kind of step away to give them some privacy and I go join Estelia with the other child right um because you're kind of around there um something that you will notice uh that the husband in this situation is gearing up yeah i'm not surprised <laughs> um and there's a number of his mates that are also gearing up okay uh, so when, when I approach Estelia, uh, I think first I just, I just kind of, uh, take a moment to assess how things are going with the assumed sibling, um, and, you know, kind of make sure I'm not interrupting maybe an important moment. Yeah. Um, um okay well the you know the child's beside themselves yeah Estelia she doesn't really know Estelia you know, okay. um you guys have had dealings with these people but you're not like best of friends you know you helped them right. out and you've stayed yeah. in contact that's about it you know you it's not like you have known each other for the months or years so this child is like knows Estelia, but doesn't know Estelia. Yeah. Um, okay. So she's just like, or, or he he he's just like, like yeah, uh, and he, he's he's going around, you know, punching things, you know. Uh, if you know anything about Dathomirian culture, um, the male, um, the male side is is quite um, aggressive. Uh, so this child, he's probably about 12. Uh, okay. and he's, you know, he's taking out his, uh, sadness and, and, and trauma by punching things. Um, not people, just whatever things. he can and just okay. being, yeah. So Sally's just like, I don't know. Try, try so I, um, as I approach her then I kind of uh, you know just touch, touch her lightly to 
to let her know I'm there. Yeah, yeah. And um, kind of just, so what do you make of this? Um, being that she's actually spent some time with Skivath, she has a bit of an inkling as to what maybe has happened. Uh, she's not happy at all. <laughs> uh, she's actually pretty angry herself. Um, she's like, I think he might have taken her to be uh, his student. I don't think she's going to be harmed. But that's not what you do. And I'm, I wash my hands of my time with him. I did not foresee that he would do something as immoral as this. Yeah, he seemed uh, pretty helpful. He's going to have his hands full, though, and I kind of um, motion with, with my head and my eyes to the men gearing up. Yeah, it seems that way. Um, but, right. it's got, I, I don't know what they're going to be able to do. I mean, you did, did you feel that field that he held us in? It was, I, I couldn't move. I, they're gonna just get hurt yeah I don't know what they're gonna be able to do uh, without hurting her I, I don't so, yeah. isn't that kind of dangerous for I mean even though he doesn't want to hurt her isn't isn't he kind of calling attention to her She, she hops and throws her hands in the air. Uh, yeah. Uh, I guess, uh, you know, after a minute, you know, when she calms herself down, you can see uh, that, you know, she, she can. She can calm herself down. And she does. She calms herself down really well. Um, and once she has, she, she sort of says, well, I guess it depends where he goes. If he... If he takes her deeper into space there, there's no way that she's going to be a target no one knows about her if he takes her to the core worlds I think that would be like the most stupid thing that he could do I don't think that he would do that why would he go there this well even further out than this is where he spent so many years Maybe he's going back there. Maybe. Wherever there is, I don't even... He didn't even talk about it. Which is going to make it... Really hard. <laughs> anybody retrieve her? Uh. Um, yeah. Uh, he... So, long story short, he, he's got diplomatic immunity too. He's what? got diplomatic immunity. Hmm. He's a Jedi, nice. so they can't touch. Like, no one can touch him. No one can touch him. <laughs> Just. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I mean, Miss like clueless even as to how we can even be of any help to this family as much as her heart like goes out to them and she feels for them I mean we're clearly <laughs> outclassed by this guy like yeah um when when the um when Legia sort of calms down a little bit um uh she does um she does thank you 
for just being there. Um, and she says, um, uh, there's a message um, here um, for, for, for you guys um, from, from Asa. Um, she, she sent word that she was, she wanted you to check in um, when you could. Thank you so much. I, I I know you have far more important things to worry about right now, right. Uh, but I appreciate you passing that on. We'll be sure to check in with her. All right. Um, and then, um, you know what? She goes into her, um, her tent. Uh, well, it's a bit more than a tent. You know, they, they you know, they're, they're quite decent. Um, uh, sort of um, uh, uh, buildings now um, and uh, she comes out and she says um, this um, this is my daughter's um, it, if you find her would, would, would you give this to her um, to know that, so that she knows that we love her, and I don't know if you'd be able to get her back, but it, and if you can't, you, you, you have it, and she, she hands you, uh, a, a nine-year-old girl's diary, basically. Ah. <laughs> uh. I don't know. Um, I gotta be honest with you, Leggy. I don't know how much we can do, if anything. Mm -hmm. I know. But I'll keep this safe. And um, I'll do what I can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She understands uh, this is not, yeah. Yeah. All right. So then Jeep's like, let's just do stuff. Let's not get involved. <laughs> <You're not nervous. laughs> All right. Uh, so what I've, toys. <laughs> uh, what I'll do real quick, uh, I'm going to type in uh, what I'm going to say uh, because there's a bunch of planets. So basically, when you check in with Osa, We'll just do this real quick, uh, and we'll, then we'll, okay. we'll take a few minutes. Um, oh, great. Um, break. But uh, real quick, when you check in with Osa, uh, she has heard from um, uh, a Dazcor, and they have um, they have basically given her uh, their plan for uh, it, gate expansion, and they've basically said hand this list um, to you guys because you guys are still employed by them uh, and um, uh, basically get you to uh, go you know do what you did with Chuzala with these uh, and so um, what we have um, is a bunch of planet names I'm just gonna type them in <laughs> I'm not even gonna try and pronounce half of them because it doesn't matter uh, uh, so I'll type in the system uh, the um, the system and the sector um, and they don't know necessarily um, exactly which planet they just know that it's in that se sector uh, uh, and system um, um, so um, and these <laughs> planets these um, they so in order to have created these gates they needed to hold life 
you also have your ship, so you can go through on your ship and, you know, if it's dangerous, it's okay. Um, anyway, so I'll type in a bunch of um, system sector names, um, which is pretty much our plan of what we're doing with Dascore. For each one that we successfully go to and establish the gateway, uh, like power it up and, ha and you know, all that, uh, which we know how to do and doesn't take any checks anymore because we, we've we've had experience now um, For each one that we do that for they're going to take 5,000 credits off off our Obligation to them off the off the debt so, Okay All right, so um, Let me so I'm going to type in all of that and then um, you guys can feel free to start your break now or whatever. I'll all be here in roll 20. Um, so if you want to do that. Um, and yeah, so for everyone else, we're going to be right Great. back. Um, and I'll mute everything uh, while we do that. All right. And we'll see you guys in a sec.
we avoid hut space as long as we can. Yeah. And we're back. Yes, yes, hut space is probably not where we want to be. Um, <laughs> but we might be able to sneak in and sneak out, depending on what we're doing. Yeah, so we're, we're back. This is Slice of Desperation. I am GM Matt in a hat. And these are my friends, Jim and Chris. And we're playing a bit of Star Wars. And uh, yeah, so we've we've gotten a bit of information. We, we've had a few different random things happen. Um, we have a bit of a plan from our employers at Dazcor, who are big, basically the biggest corporation out here in the uh, Niada. And um, I forgot to get us to roll discipline checks. Um, so, um, what I'll do from this time on, I really need you guys to record these, um, and to record your successes and failures so that, um, we can come back to them. Um, because, um, I don't want to, um, say too much, but each time we use the gate, we're going to need to, to make one of these. Uh, we didn't roll destiny, no. Um, so, we will do that. We've been getting all, lots of information um, up to date, but yes, let's uh, let's roll some destiny. Uh, so, got one there. Dark side. Something, something dark side. All right. Okay. So we have two and two. Very good. And uh, so this check, uh, I'm, because we didn't record the first one, um, let's do this. Um, as if it was the first one. All right, so we'll do uh, straight average. Straight average discipline, which is two purples. And where are we can record it too? I, okay. I just need, yeah, uh, somewhere where we can just track successes and failures. Okay, so that's a failure for you, Mineth. And success for Chief. Uh, and Estelia. Character sheet. Just gonna roll two purples by themselves. Eh? All right. Well, Estelia succeeded. Many, many, many. Okay. All right. Uh, I might do. Wow. Overall, we did pretty well. Uh, what I'll do is I'll make a little thing for myself here. Uh, so, discipline. That way, you know, if, if you guys don't keep track for that. I noted it too. I'll have it. So, this time. Chief, success. Ineth, fail, and Stalia, success. And we're just going to call this the first time since, since we don't remember. All right, cool. Uh, so we have a bunch of things that we could uh, we could do. Um, So what are our characters 
leaning towards um, I know Minas probably got her mind on her family at this point um, knowing that they're in a slave colony it's probably way yeah, what, her mind what sectors are those were those planets in all right, uh, so... Yep, I'll get that for us now. Alrighty. Uh, the Heffy system? The Albion sector? Uh, the, uh, no, Heffy's... Heffy's cell. Uh, Right. I will get that for you. Right. Oh no, that was the um, the engineer. Yeah. So. Okay. Sorry. Sick. So, uh, Elysia, which is where the where um where. The rebels think it's most likely for them to be. Mm -hmm. Alessia is in the Charaba system, mm. which is Charaba planet Alessia, where Minas parents. Uh, and then we've got yeah we Alicia Zugan and Poita but what system or sector are those in um yep yeah, so so planet Alessia is in the Charaba Araba. system and that is in hot space yeah all of these are in hot space right ah right that's right hmm. um so all, all of this is uh so yeah, about uh, that uh planet pointer uh which is slavers and smugglers is in the pointer system space T twelve. And all of this all of this is T twelve, yeah? I'll record that. And the last one is Planet Zugin. Uh Slave colony, um, Zugin system, uh, up space, uh, all in T twelve, and it's like, uh, um, all the way north. So they're right like north and in the center of T12. Not, not that space is done with north, south, east, west, but for our for our purposes, we're using two dimensional maps, so it's north. Okay. I don't know how space navigation is done. I'm not a <laughs> not an astronaut. It's all good. Wow, okay. Hmm. Yeah, so we know it's in hot space. We know it's um uh it's not it's not wise to just travel there. Um so if you look at it on a map, um uh here let me I'm on the wrong page. 
So there's two possible, if you wanted to get to, get to them, right? There's two possibilities. Okay, so I'll give you both. The first possibility So they're up here, right? So this is the three planets up here at the top of T12. And if we zoom out a little bit, we see that here is Ryleb. Is that the right way for you guys or is it up? Uh... Yeah, that's right. good. Um, yeah, so this is Ryleb there. And you know that there's a gate here, right? So you could gate to Ryleb and then travel that distance right by a ship that's still a decent way um, the other possibility is to gate I know this is a separate piece of paper here All right, so if you have a look what I've done is one second T so we need you the other possibility is if we gate to Regulan. All right, so oh, this is going to be very difficult to do to show you this. All right, so here you go. All right, so there. Um, so Regulan is down here and you could sort of go up and across via that blue line which would sort of mean that you're not going you're not gating to hut space um, but it's further away so it's going to take longer I will what I'll do for next time um, or between now and next time is I will digitize all of these and I will send them out so that we've got so we've got them that'd be great all right so hmm. because yeah pretty much all you have to do is tap it into the computer and you can see these at any time so I will um, I will make sure you've got them for next time sorry I didn't do that Hmm. And are any of the like we don't know where why am I suddenly blanking on his name? Skaboth. Uh Skaboth. Yeah. Um if okay. We don't have any idea where he came from. Right. So if anywhere. So this this is our this is our campaign area, right? So this, this is everything that we're going to go to, right? So we're not necessarily going to go to all of it. Near Pando is there, right? And this is hot okay. space, this, this, this area, right? This grade in area, that's all hot space, okay? okay? So it's, it's huge. There's a big area of hot space. Um, right, so um, this way, so these over here, right? you would assume that he's come from somewhere in this band. The reason for that is he was near Wild Space when he came back. Now Wild Space is this grade in area, right? So this grade in area is Wild okay. Space. So you think if he was to go anywhere, he's probably going to be somewhere over here. Mm. But where, and that's, we're talking galaxies and galaxies and galaxies and galaxies, right? So each one of these dots, right, which you can barely see on the map, right, the dots, but if I zoom all the way in, we can see a dot, right? Those dots are galaxies. <laughs> uh. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we're talking huge scale here. Needle in a haystack. Right. All right, so... Hmm. And and let's be honest. Saving this one kid. It's versus 
all of these other opportunities that we have. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, I mean, yeah, you feel sorry for them maybe, but when your family is on the line, I'm pretty sure your family comes first for you at least, Mineth. And for... Yeah. Um, I'm going to do everything I can to talk you into doing something con concerning the A-Wings. Because... Like, I'm wrapped around their little finger right now. I love the potential for what they're willing to reward us. So. Let's see. I guess then, do any of these places that a DAS Corp wants us to go have any particular interest for that group right uh so if we even know that yeah um okay so yeah um obviously any of these gates that we go to there's gonna be stuff there right that as part of side quests or whatever so a Daz Corps just sure. wants us to go to these places, right? All, all, all of the ones that I've listed, right? So they want to go. Yeah. They want us to go to all of them, uh, but you know how much we get through, it's not important, right? Uh, in each of those locations, there's side stuff, right? Some of that side sure. stuff we know now. Some of it we don't. Um, to to narrow things down to make it a little bit easier. Um, we'll, there's basically three, Twelve. there's three directions we could go with what we know now, right? So, sure. um, the, f um, and we'll go, f we'll go from top to bottom, right? So the first direction that we could go would be to go to Minas family, which would be the farthest north option, right? To get there, like I said, we would either gate to Ryleb, which would by itself check a box, check a box right. right? And then travel from Ryleb north to those slave worlds and try and find them, right? That's, but that's gating to hut space, Right, so we well, number one, we're gating yeah. to heart space. Number two, we're flying in heart space. No matter what, we're gonna have to fly in heart space. But yeah, uh, so there's that option. By the same token, we can gate to um, uh, what was the name of it? Um, Regulin. Uh, Regulin. Yeah. And then yeah. sort of go diagonal from Regulin up, up there. Um, and that would mean that, you know, you're not gating to hut space and you're only, the, the amount of hut space that you go through is not going to be as much. Um, so that, that's another option. Um, so that's that direction, right? You know, right. you know that your parents are, are there, you know, who else is likely to be there? Durga the Hut is likely to be there, and Jabba the Hut has presence up there. You know it's going to be huts, right? <laughs> like, let's just be real: huts, be criminals, a... slaves. That's all there. Okay. If we instead um, went south, uh, so we could go to um, the we could go to Heffy, right? We could for this is for Jeef, right? So, so Jeef has interest in Heffy because we know if he wants to get on board with this engineer, if he decides, yep, I want to go and contact him and get his brains uh, and his tech, which is significant, right? Like he he designed the Death Star, he knows his shit, and he's got a whole bunch of stuff, but he's hiding out right now. So. He, if you decided you wanted to do that, you would go south down to Heffy. 
Um, now, as far as other things down there, there's, there's not a huge amount. So that's like if Jeev decided to do that and not to like give this information to the Imperials for bunches of credits. Like lots of credits. Like we would pay off our debt straight away with those credits. Um, right? So there's that. Um, the final option is to go to that trade world, right? Which I said uh, that I would look up. Um, the trade world is... Uh, we would be gating to... That would be the gate to Durunda. D, uh, which is in T15. So that's, again, we'd be gating there. And then we'd be traveling south from there. And the planet that we would be going to would be in the... Would be Herios, I think. Uh, let me... T15. And that is... One second, like... Kyberon. Kyberon. And um, that's of interest to both of you. One, because for for um, for Mineth, that's a trade, a trader who who you could you know work with or whatever, and and get some stuff. And you know that that would be really good because you'd or, or you'd be fulfilling some of this thing with with the rebels as well. You could start to figure out what you could do with his tech to get into the rebels hands um so that would be good and for jeef um you know that he is a trader of all things tech and so he would he would be a great person to go and talk to um and that is um not rothana I keep on misplacing that. Um, why is this so difficult? I need to look at. It. <clears throat> I need to look at my team maps here. Sorry. So you see what I've done. Because I know that I've got the information, I'll just... Uh, we'd be going to Duranda, and then from there to uh, the Herios system. Which is in the Herios sector. That's why I couldn't find it, because it's in a different sector. So, Herios... Axel, Galov, Hirios. Yeah. So you'd, yeah, you'd just be going to Hirios. Um, and since that's sector T15, yeah, we could activate the gate that gate at Dur Duranda. Duranda. Yeah, Which, whichever way we go, we're gonna be activating a gate. Nice, right? So this this is the campaign, right? It's like everything sure. is gonna be surrounding where the gates are to facilitate moving on with the campaign. That's that's what this is, so. Um, rather than taking, you know, six months to get from one side of the world, uh, the you know, the galaxies to the other. Um, so yeah. Um, uh, there's pros and cons for all of that. 
uh, as yeah. as Jeff, uh, well, as Jim said, his Jeff's gonna be trying to convince Mineth to do something, you know, around these rebels, uh, and pr- probably you think that you know, if, if you want to lean that way, then going down to Durando is probably the best because you know right. that then there's a trader there you know that you can start doing your trading thing um you know that there's going to be a whole bunch of tech down there so that you can either buy or bargain with um and for so i don't know i from what i initially heard that's probably where i think you're leaning if you've got other ideas um or if i'm not hearing you right say so no, I think uh, I think you hit the nail on the head. I mean, as much as as much as Minith would want to find her parents, like messing around in hut space, <laughs> might be nice to have some of that tech, too. <laughs> you know, so yeah. And how this works pretty much is that you would say you would you would basically contact a Dazcore and say this is where we're gonna go is there anything else that you that you know that that you can do for us or that we can do for you in that sector as we go right like just so that they're aware of whereabouts you're gonna likely be and Mm -hmm. and so if there is any side stuff like rumors and things like that that can siphon through a dascore dascore has connections everywhere so they're likely the ones that you're going to get the most information from you you're going to be able to get a really good cross section of what's in those sectors and what rumors there are and what you might need to look out for and what species you might come in contact with all of that information does call has awesome i e me <laughs> So we're going to go now? What do you think about Deronda? Yep. Is that some trade? <clears throat> Not hot space? Not hot space. <laughs> That's about as far from hot space as you're going to get. <laughs> You can go to Heart Space, but that'd be looking to um, do stuff for um, Minus family. Yeah. I mean, you know. Weren't, but weren't all the the two slave planets in the criminal haven? That's all in Heart Space, yeah. Yep. Remember, this yeah. is this is not. You don't necessarily have to do I things. I want to go after my parents, Chief, but I'd like to live through that too. <laughs> I'd like to, them to live. So yeah, you, you probably have this inkling that if you went up there to try and rescue them, there's going to be all sorts of underworldish stuff up there, and you're probably going to come up against uh, up against it at this stage. I think we could really use some of that tech you like so much, Chief. And some gadgets and things that you could make for us before we go messing around in Durga and Jabba's world. Yeah. They're not gonna be too happy about us stealing slaves. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Why would I want to steal slaves? As in, I've already got J3EF. Or EP. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Let's go to Duranda. All right. All right. So we'll find out some stuff about Duranda quickly just before we get there. So, all right. I'll give you a little bit of a cross section. Um. Okay. Curios. And then uh Kyber. Q R S T. All right. Duranda. 
Um, Planet Duranda is home to the Duranda species. So this is something with Star Wars. They name things all the same. Their systems are the same as their planets, which are often named after the ra the species that are on the planet. Um, so, okay. Duranda species. What you know of the Duranda species, um, or at least what uh, a Dazcor can tell you, or what a quick net search will be able to tell you, is that the Duranda species tried to conquer the planet Arduba, but they were foiled by C-3PO and R2-D2. Their plan was... Foiled. They were foiled from, I'm sorry, from doing what? Uh, trying to conquer a planet. <laughs> cool. Um, heading south, uh, I'm just going to sort of give you a cross section, yeah? So heading south from Duranda into the Heriosec sec system, um, then you would find out that, uh, the Herios system, um, you know that, uh, planet Herios 4 is a jungle planet. Um, you know that there's an imperial colony there. But you know that there's rebel bases on that planet too, because you're you friends with the rebels. You wouldn't get that information from a data call, the rebel information, but you've got the rebel contacts to be able to know that. Um, also, a does call would um, when when you when you look it up, uh, it would start bleeping and it would say that there's uh, actually a job. Um, there's actually a job to deliver a passenger to um, Herios 4 uh, and that that job uh, that job you, you, you would re be required to pick up your passenger and to deliver him there um, and the pickup would be um, uh would be closer to um, Chuzala. It's um, just uh, and to Mazan. So you'd need to like um, travel <laughs> sort of uh, you need to go and pick up your passenger first and then if you wanted to do that quest and you would see that it's paying um, it's paying um, 7,000 credits for that transfer of passengers. That sounds pretty easy. Uh, the passenger is a Barabel named Baraduk. Do we have a reason for pa needing passage? Um, so, um, on the when you first look at it, um, it doesn't say in a Dazcores file, but when you open it up, you notice um, because you've seen rebel communiques, you see some. Um, you see like the subtext <laughs> in in the uh, mission, and you can see that it's actually being posted by rebels. So when you go back to your rebel contacts and talk to them, they say that um, the quest is to um, disguise yourself as slavers. And bring Barabel, uh, bring bring Baraduk to the planet because uh, Baraduk is a master at raiding Imperial facilities, and they want him down there to raid the weapons facilities of the Imperials. Um, and uh, he is well capable of doing that. Uh, and if you disguise yourself as slavers, that means that you'll be able to land safely in the Imperial, like, areas of, um, Imperios. 
They say you don't have to disguise yourself as slavers, but they say that's the the uh, the safest way to do that. They want to show the Imperials a lesson, basically, by setting this guy free um, in Herios. Interesting. Uh, so there's that. Um, what else? Um, that's that. You know, that's a, that's the cross section of of what there's other there's other systems and stuff around there, but you know, they're the basics. I don't like the idea of taking this highly unique ship and saying it's imperial. Right. It's a good point. Mm -hmm. I don't think we'll have much of a. Much you, th of there's a other ways of it. yeah. There's other ways of doing it than than that. So, but yeah, that's a fair point. <laughs> you could. You could um, instead sort of hide out among the rebels. Um, not, you know, and then, you know, take, take him by a foot to, to the more, to the Imperial side of the planet. <laughs> I don't think that... Or transport? We're going to necessarily transport. do the best at line. I'm looking at you. Fair. It's just an I option. I don't admit that I'm not going to lie, but I can keep my mouth shut. But that would mean you'd have to lie. Right. And I don't think that'll work. And Stelia's not brilliant at lying either. She's very charming, but... Definitely not my strong suit. All right. Uh, well, you know we can we can take or leave anything that I throw at you, right? So everything is up to you. We don't have to go anywhere or do anything. I so I think maybe we pass on that little. All piece. right, we pass on the side quests, um, <laughs> but yeah, um, that that's what's in the sector. Um, there's rumors. Uh, that um, there's a, a bounty out um, down there on a giant. Excuse me. Apparently, there's a there's a planet nearby near near Herios where there's a there's a giant and there's a bounty out on that giant, which would probably be a very big pull for someone like Rickdat. But Rick, that's not here right now. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. But that that I'm just yeah, saying what what you get when you search that nearby area as far as sure rumors and okay. jobs and other stuff. You don't have to do anything well, else. You can just go there, establish the gate. Find this trader and do the, that. That's absolutely fine. Just throwing it your way, and if if you're like, oh yeah, that sounds fun, we'll go and do something else, then you can. Totally up to you guys. At least, do we want to just get underway and visit this guy yeah. and and at least, yeah. yeah. All right. Excellent. <sighs> Anything? Any preparations? Quickly before we go. Anything that you need need obviously we have we have money to buy stim packs or other things if you would like them we do have a medical facility on board the ship but can't necessarily always get back there especially in the heat of battle if there is any battle which we don't know eh. sure I'll restock stim packs and move on cool Alright, so 
Very good. Um. Deronda, then. I feel like, uh, I'm going to go look at my character sheet for a second here. Yeah. Yep. That sounds good. Okay. Um, so, yeah, you can gate to Duranda, which will be a discipline check for Jeef. Um, this is average with a setback for... Mineth, this is upgraded average. Purple and a red with a setback. Uh, which, what check? Discipline. Discipline. Ugh. It's my worst thing. <laughs> um, did you set, are you setting it then? Um, I set mine. One sec. I don't think so. Let's just make sure everything's clear. And make just make sure as when you set your dice that you click outside of the boxes so that it accepts your entry. So yeah. Uh, I will, uh, yeah, if you said it. It'd be better if I said it? Okay. Um, then I will... So, purple, red, and black for you. And black. Ouch. Oh, this is gonna be ugly. <laughs> Discipline. Oh! Oh, okay. <laughs> So it didn't quite make it. Um, Estelia. Um, discipline. And we need two purples and a setback. Um, for her. Oh, shit. All right, Estelia's failing to her. <laughs> She have had a boost because she did so well on the last one. <laughs> Possibly. Ouch. There's probably an extended amount of time between them. Yeah. Mineth. Fail. Chief. Succeed. Nice. Ouch. Alright, <laughs> um, so you failed twice, Mineth. Um, you fall asleep during um, during the travel and you have uh, you have a dream while you're sleeping that you remember when you wake up the dream is of um, a male voice that you don't recognize um, calling out a name and that name is Yasmin. Now, where did it come down? Um. And the calling out seems to be not just calling for someone, but it sounds like this uh, an amount of desperation in this in this call. Uh, maybe it starts off just calling out, and then it gets like more and more like desperate, like yeah, where are you? Sort of, um, yeah. But there's no response. Um, there's only this voice calling out this name. And like, where are you? And things like that. And you wake up and you remember this dream vividly. 
and it's almost not quite but it's almost like you can still hear them calling out in your head because it's you know when you wake up from a dream and you can sort of still see it or still yeah it's, yeah. it's right there in the waking yeah so that that's what it is for you Uh, and then you get to the, you get to, um, Duranda. So, um, the Durandans are a species of pointed-eared humans. They have pink skin, black hair, and yellow eyes. Their bald, um, uh, most of them are bald, and um, uh, yeah, they have like a, an egg shaped cranium, and uh, their ears are tapered. Long dangling lobes. It's like um, you know those. Uh, you know when you have those really weighty earrings that sort of pull. You know the tribal people and, uh, and that 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 sort of have the really long earlobes. Well, can think of that, but just naturally without jewelry. But that that's how their ears look. Um, so they have black brows, but they're hairless. Uh, they're more bald on the top of their head. Um, they speak galactic basic standard. And... They... Um, when you arrive... Um, so basically... Uh, basically... What, I, what I've sort of done now is um, have it that's relatively safe for you whenever you establish one of these gateways. Um, it's always um, a short sort of uh, trek to a settlement uh, nearby. And when you get there, uh, you, so you, 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 if, if you want to if you want to travel around, you can. Or you can just take off um, and start traveling south toward um, toward where you're going. Um, did, did you want to check out the planet? Do you not care? Obviously, it takes you know about half a day to set up the gate to where you know it's it's fine, and you can clear the area, and make sure that it's all everything's working. You know, um, generally how this works is you've got like a little. Um, a little box that you can send to and fro to make sure that your side of the gate's working and there's communication that happens to and fro make sure everything's transferring okay um, so you do that each time just consider that each time you're making one of these gates we just do it it's slightly okay. different each time but you kind of know how this technology works now you know that it works by by melody uh, and harmony so you basically just because you're familiar with it enough, um, at least with this part of GRI technology anyway, uh, you're able to figure it out and establish those gateways. Um, yeah, so did we want to do anything on on the planet? On, it'll just keep going. Yep, keep going. Menace, right. it would be in the keep. Yeah. All right, so yeah, we will short cut then. Uh, and we will um, we will find ourselves on Herios. Uh, now I'm guessing that we will like land um, with like in like on the rebel side of things, like in their secret kind of underground base. One of them. Cool. That seems wise. Yeah. All right. Um, what you find out about. Um, hear us, like I've said, it's a jungle planet. And yeah, there's this contact. Yeah, I've got a...
find in amongst all of this stuff? Um, corridor. All right. Um, so yeah, um, you you land, and um, and you start looking around for um, this this trader. Um, but um, it just like doesn't seem like he's around. Um, you you know, um, let's um, let's make um, some maybe um, what's what are some skills here? Let me look at my skill list. Uh, I'm thinking like streetwise and right. That sort, that sort of skill, uh, I think for Mineth, maybe even like knowledge, knowledge trade or um, what else have we got? I'll be happy to assist. I have a higher than anything in you than that on that. <laughs> so just... actually, my street wise is pretty good. Um. For knowledge, I have I'm out of real, real, rim or underworld, but there wasn't a. Uh... Okay, so just there yeah. wasn't a trade one, so. So just do just 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 do a straight wise then, um, and it's just going to be average, no uh, setbacks or. Okay. I'm assisting you. Oh, you're assisting, so you get a boost. So I get a boost, yay! And. Hmm. I have actually. Let me look here. Nope. No, those are gonna help. Okay, sorry, I was just looking at my talents real quick. Like, oh, is there anything gonna apply here? Okay, so. Yeah, it's always worthwhile. Oh, there yeah. Oh, oh, look at that! Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah, so you absolutely find out um, what's happened. Um, so it seems like um, this trader, um, and let's get a name here. Um, It's an Ortolan trader. Ortolans are a race of short blue humanoid elephants. Um, okay. And his name is Peref Nico. Um, the GH is actually an F sound in this language. Peref Nico. Uh, trader, uh, so it's Ortolan Trader, and he is currently visiting the squibs on um, on planet Holodor, which is to the south. Uh, he's on a on a trade um, sort of trip um, with the squibs. Um, so yeah, the, the locals on the street sort of show you where he usually hangs out, like his, his, um, his shop. Um, there is, it is still open um, because he's got employees, um, but he, he himself is not there. Um, the shop, however, is awesome, uh, especially to Jeef. Um, Jeef, in this shop, there's there's a really good cross section of tech in here. Um, you know, pretty much from everywhere in the galaxy. Um, you know, um, there's imported stuff from even the core worlds and that out here. He's got stuff. 
Uh, and it's all really well organized, um, Mineth. Um, as you sort of go into the shop, um, I don't know, um, we have, do you, do you guys have Repcos um, in, in America? We have Repcos, which is like a, a Repco, which is like a auto, um, auto parts, right? And oh, okay. how they're set up is they've got the front counter and then they've got um, just rows of shelves like at the back of the store and you can sort of see them you know behind staff and then staff sort of walk down the rows and find stuff right and they're quite long and they're all very well sorted this is kind of what you see so it's like a shop okay. front and then just rows of shelves you know going back some way and they're all like alphabetized they've all got like um they're really well laid even from here you can see there's like glowing data pad labels with where this was bought from you know what it what it's for you know all of this stuff all of the tech specs are on each of these plaques and you can see that from there from from where you are um wow. everything's really well looked after and the shop is clean and and well looked after so that that's what you're walking into a very well organized very clean um Okay. Uh, kind of place. How long has he been gone? Um, about uh, about ten days. Okay. Generally, generally the trip um, will take um, take three days to get there, and then he's usually there for a fortnight. And then three days to get back. Okay. And so, a fortnight is two weeks, right? Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so you think that if you travel there, you would get him at the end of his stay. Uh, maybe he'd be starting to think about packing up, but it, he wouldn't have left yet if you, if you left now. Um, okay. Or you can stay here and do whatever, wait. yeah, and wait for him. Uh, either or is fine. You just tell me which one, and we'll we'll do it. What do you think, Chief? Uh, I'm distracted and drooling. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Shells and shells of tech. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Um, we could go on somewhere else, set up another gate, come back. We could go look for him. We could wait. They say, look, if you do, um might take you a week to explore this whole show. <laughs> if you do, um... If you, Disneyland and all. <laughs> they say if you do decide to go to Holodor, um... Just know that, um... There is a bounty out on a giant from there. Um, <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. Okay. Can you tell us any more about that, about that giant? Oh, yeah. Um, he names himself after the planet. Um, so the planet's name is Holodor. And the system's name is Holodor. Yeah. And it's about three days. Why is there a bounty on his head? Uh, so the squibs, the squibs, um, have, you know, basically asked for help, really. Um, the squibs are a local race of, um, gregarious, overconfident traders, and their, um, and their settlements have come under attack from this giant. Um, squibs, um, are, um, 
They're kind of like blue foxes. Blue foxes. Their average height is one meter tall. Okay. Hmm. So the giant is... Oh, relative. <laughs> <laughs> Possibly. I look over at you and I go, let's go check out this bounty then. <laughs> reports going reports um, tell that the, that the giant is some 20 feet tall. Oh, okay. <laughs> but maybe that's been, you know, blown out of proportion. Do we know what race is that? I mean, is that a race here, or is this a, you know, a descriptor? Um. So this giant. So so okay. They've got like they've got like a, a short description, right? So this this giant, uh, it looks like rock until it starts to move. Yikes. And then, and then, you know, it stands it up big. and it like throws rock, like it picks up other rocks and throws them. Um, yeah. If it's really that big, we should just be able to, you know, skin the surface of the plant with our ship. Air some heavy machinery at it. How are we going to bring it in? They want it brought in or killed. Either or, as long as it's not um, an issue any, excuse me, anymore. Oh. Perfect. We won't bring it in. Yeah, just, you know, get rid of it. Or, or otherwise stop it from terrorizing their settlements. I don't know, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> She's like, I don't really want to go fighting things. Especially if they're right. big rock monsters. <laughs> I look at I look at his tell ya. Kind of up, more up your alley, I think. She's like, I'm game. I mean Alright. Well <laughs> But you know, She'll pass if you guys decide to pass too. I mean, it's just a, it's just a, um, it's just a, a side job. Um, so the, um, the, the reward is the penalty, free. Yeah. The reward is free pickings at the Squibs um, trading station. Oh, I'm in. <laughs> Jeef has already, you look, for, you're starting to look for Jeef, and Jeef has already left the building. <laughs> he's, he's just out of there. Jeef has what left the it? building. All right. Pickings. He's like, let's go. Let's All go. right. <laughs> All right. Okay. That's too funny. Oh, man. All right. Um, so I'm just going to transfer us over to that map. I'm just going to have to drag this Excuse me. so it's not going to be quite right when I so don't worry about that one all right so here is the squib village uh, let me get rid of AD here give some tokens I can't oh, I've got a bunch of tokens on here uh, where are we objects and tokens why can I not Interact with this. There we go. Uh, there we go. So if we zoom out, don't worry about all of these tokens. All right. I think that's all of them. If we zoom out, you can sort of see that the squibs live um, uh, on all of these rocks. Yeah. They're the little village. They've got these, um, they've got these circular, um, uh, circular little huts. 
that are all around big fire that they put on when it gets too cold. Uh, that's their trading area there. And then, um, uh, and those little huts all have like little trading um, uh, stations. And then up on the higher levels is where their houses actually are. Um, and they, uh, they have both the outside housing and they've actually burrowed through the rock uh, and have like a little facility um, in, in the rock itself. And uh, they're very welcoming. Um, you know, you land, you, you make your way here. Uh, they they welcome you to to their um, their, their um, thing. You can see that there's a number of different races milling about and trading with them and stuff. Um, so uh, like I said earlier, these guys are like really gregarious. Um, they're like over just exuberant. They're like, oh, come, you know, come and trade, and you know, they're they're very friendly and very just like you know, come and see this, and everyone's barking stuff, and but everything's all in good fun. Um, yeah, you can see that um, in these trading uh, huts that there's all sort of manner of things. It's probably not as um, drool-worthy as back uh, on the other planet, but um, yeah, they've got, they've got a good selection of stuff. It's more eclectic. I would call it an eclectic selection these squibs have. It's all sorts of stuff. Um, yeah, and they will tell you about this giant. They say, oh, um, we have a, a bit of a problem. It's this giant that rises up from the rock and throws rocks and comes and stomps on the ground. And they gesture at um, a number of these little little rocky outcroppings, and you can see that you know that they've actually been smashed rocks that have been thrown and left discarded on the ground. That must be very frustrating for you. Is there a place where this uh, troublemaker likes to hang out in particular? Ah, uh, yes. Um, just be very careful. Um, if you follow the ridge, um, which is just down here, um, if you follow the ridge, um, you'll come to, um, more, like, bigger hills and mountains. Yeah. It lives there. But it has okay. very far reach. You can throw those rocks pretty much from where it is to here. <laughs> Whoa. Oh. Why hasn't it? It, it has. <laughs> Don't you see? <laughs> wow. Okay. So all of these little rocks, the ones that aren't you know, so this one and these ones, they're all just like fragments of rock that are smashed. Um, oh, man. You don't think that it's terribly far? Maybe like less than a mile to where they're, <laughs> where they're saying? It just doesn't sound like it's far away. Have you been able to... Have any success in defending yourselves from it? Well, we made our we made our homes inside the rock, so that the other rocks smash against the rock and they don't hurt us. And we pack everything up of a night time, and put all of our trading uh, stations underneath the rock, <laughs> so that we're protected. Does it mostly? come out at night then? Uh, that's when rocks have smashed here, yes. Hmm. But if you get too close, he rises from the mountain. 
higher and higher and higher with muscles of stone and feet of stone and hands of stone. Wow. Okay. Do you know anything about any of its other habits? Um, except for Ball. throwing rocks. No? <laughs> okay. Well, Chief. It's all up for this. <laughs> I still think we should use the ship. <laughs> Yeah, what are we armed with on the ship? We have a. Ah, oh, you have you, you got right. just stand, standard ship weapons and armament. It, like I've said um, to you a couple of times, you're you're well protected against anything that's like, you know, just a passing pirate ship or something like that. Like you you unless you know like entire squadrons of fighters come against you, which. Isn't gonna happen in this campaign, right? Like it's it's just sure, not part really of fine. the campaign. You you're safe. <laughs> well, ship seems like the best way. Yeah. Should we go hunt some giant then? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Very good. Um, where are we? I've got all of my. If it wouldn't do that. Alrighty. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, um, if you like, I'll just transfer us to the next map. And obviously, you're in your ship. Uh, as we <coughs> not. So you're in your ship, not your transport, is that correct? Or are you going mm. by transport? Ship has bigger guns on it, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, being that the transport doesn't have any guns. Then yes. that. Alright, now did this work? Yep. So, um, yeah. So, um, you can follow this, um, this thing, uh, and you're in your ship and, um, I'll show you what happens. Okay. Um, so you can see that there's, um, uh, the, there's this, um, the rock sort of comes over the, the road or the path road um, and either flying over or under that um, uh, that a massive figure Whoa. raises his hand off the thing uh, and his arm was the gap between this rock and the one over there <laughs> and he just sort of oh. starts to stand up and he is huge Chief, he really is a giant fire 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 <laughs> and he's picking up a giant piece of rock and uh, his hands are not quite the size of this ship. <laughs> They're Prepare close. for space maneuvers. <laughs> <laughs> he he stands up and there's just this rumbling sound. And he just makes this... Uh, uh, his voice sort of resounds. And you can sort of feel it. You know, the, the bass. Uh, even in the ship, you can sort of feel the bass. Well, and he just says, Holodor! Yeah. We have to talk to it or we shoot it. Well, uh, 
how, how are we gonna talk to it? And we're in the ship. <laughs> Just twitch and speak into the microphone. Do we have like a uh, PA system on this thing? <laughs> of course. It's already canon because I was using it when we first. That was a transport, wasn't it? Okay. Uh, so, um, can I can I throw something in your way? All right. So, uh, being that this thing has you know lifted its arm and its arm was the thing that was over the road, I'd like. Uh, let's make. I think uh, fear check is discipline. So I'm I'm rolling a whole lot of disciplines. I'm sorry. Discipline. Discipline's the thing, right? What are we now. gonna do with you tonight, Matt? I don't know. We're rolling more disciplines. It's hard. No, no setbacks. Oh. I don't know. It it's it's the word of the session, apparently. Oh, apparently. Okay, so uh, I'm sorry. You said difficult. Uh, hard, yeah. Three. Thanks. <laughs> oh, you're I welcome. Fail one. Oh, man. I finally missed... fail a discipline roll. Alright. So... Oh. Uh, and you're failing. And... Put away! Yeah, uh, I'm gonna... And Estelle... I don't have one! Estelle, yeah, with her discipline... Uh, so it's three, isn't it? Come on, Estelia! Three, alright, and discipline. Blah. Join us, Estelia. Oh. Alright, yeah, so she's not afraid, but you guys are afraid. Um, I am definitely afraid. So that doesn't, so there's nothing, there's no negatives per se. Uh, although all of us rolled threats, so you can take some strain from that. Um, I should have our characters here, shouldn't I? Let's, um, let's move some characters over. I forgot to clear my strain from earlier. How many strain are we taking one for each threat? Uh, yes. Okay. Straight us from over here, and I will move us to here again. <laughs> I mean, our token, our tokens are whatever, right? Like, we're obviously in our ship. Don't worry about that. But that's just so that we can know. Uh, Stelia got three strain. Uh, cool. So, um... Do we know anything about... Well, okay, I'm in fear, so I'm probably not... Never mind. Oh, you can you can make a check. I mean, this... I'm just thinking, like, xenology. Yeah, um... So... Yeah, you can make a check. You can, you can make a check. Uh, let's see... I'll give you a yes. Man, is that average or um average with a setback do that do it that way i'm all freaked Cause, out because you yeah you kind of bit okay yeah um that's a stone giant uh what do you know about them uh well with those successes um they generally travel, uh, dwell far from civilizations on high mountains, in deep valleys, or in enormous cave systems. They are territorial. Uh, <laughs> generally do not attack unless provoked. They can throw boulders with extraordinary accuracy. Oh, great. <laughs> Shields up. <laughs> Shields to the rear. Yeah, we well, treat. This this will be this will be the uh, whatever we do to resolve this will be the end of the session there, Jim, and that's all good. Um, understand it's getting late and you've had a very long day or a very long couple of days. Um, yeah, so um, we're afraid. Where we see this thing picking up a giant rock that's almost as big as this ship is. 
Would we know what their a vulnerability would be? Um. Well, to start with, um, firing a ship weapon would definitely have an impact. We're talking about ship weapons that have breach. Breach is definitely the thing that you're going to want. Um, as, um, I don't know, what can I say? This is a nemesis level creature. Um, it's only adversary yes. one, so it's not... You know, but, okay. but the so um, you know that it's relatively slow. So picking up one of these rocks uh, is going to take you know a little bit. So it's got slow firing too, which means that it sort of takes time to recharge. Um, but it can if it does hit you either with its fists which don't have that recharge, or with its boulder, um, you know it's real, like they're big, so they're really gonna have an impact. Um, but, um, you're in a ship, so the ship's gonna absorb <laughs> a lot of it. Um, how we, uh, how we deal with that is, um, we make resilience checks every time the ship gets hit, and then we reduce, um, damage. So you're still going to take damage in the sense that it's going to rock the ship if it hits. Okay. We're moving at ship scale. At ship scale, yes. Um, we so... can we could shoot and shoot outside of its throwing range. Yes, you could. Yeah, which I think we should. I don't think we should get close enough for it to swipe us, smack us or anything. Like with its hand. Right, so we want to bring it down with the ship because in the end, if you do it out, <laughs> if you want to do it uh, out of scale, uh, like in the scale that you're thinking, you're like away from it and just shooting it with lasers, uh, then you can. Uh, I'm not going to make us be in an encounter if you don't want to be. If you want to bring it down with your ship, then bring it down with your ship. We'll spend a story point for it. I mean I can use my gunnery <laughs> yeah I um, mean that'll just mean that we don't have to deal with with it um, and we can finish a little bit earlier so I, I don't mind I'll, I'll take it then let's All right. well, spin that story point then okay uh, uh, as so um, with so yeah you, you fire um and you know it will you know lift up this massive boulder and will throw it and you can see that uh it can throw a very long way but it can't ever reach you know ship level combat sort of uh but you can see that if you were closer uh it was definitely very accurate it was definitely coming exactly toward you um when it smashes on the ground um you know little craters are made um all sorts of stuff um and yeah you um but eventually um being that you're so far away and it can't reach you it will just um it will uh, kneel and and lie down and put its arm down and then you can sort of just blow the heck out of it uh until there's no mountain left really uh and um yeah, and then uh, sort of in its dying throes, it'll just go. And effectively, you've defeated it. At my giant. <laughs> okay. And don't get so cocky. Um, Alright, so um, we can report back uh, and as promised you have free pickings of the squib trade uh, area which like I said is eclectic so pretty much you can go looking through the books for something that that you want that's let's say it's uh, free pickings 
Under uh, 3,000 credits sound reasonable to you guys? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, anything higher than Rarity 7 won't be here either. Oh, okay. I don't... Yeah, because, I mean, these guys are eclectic. If if you find something that's that, that's that rarity and you really, really want it... Uh, yeah, it's fine. It's fine. You know what? It's fine. Uh, <laughs> I don't mind. Um... All right, we'll just say that it's there. Uh, and um, that'll pretty much bring us to uh, the end of the session as we're able to um, to meet with our trader as well as he is here on trade um, stuff. So next time uh, we'll be able to have a chat and come into some sort of deal with him. And we'll decide where next. Um, Maybe um, he'll have some conditions um, or want us to do something we don't know. So we'll, we'll do all that next time and we will find out what's next for our characters. Um, hopefully you've had fun and hopefully we'll try and, um, you know, be, be a little bit more regular now that sort of New Year's come and gone and and everything we'll try and we'll try and do things uh, rel relatively more regularly um, and uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, we'll continue to see what the campaign's about thank you guys for playing I've enjoyed um, running from this game for you and hopefully all the uh, things that you found out and stuff has been interesting and um, and you're happy Lots. with your advancement um, because we defeated a stone giant and because we found this trader and by coming here, uh, you guys can have 20 experience for today. Woohoo! Thank you. You're yeah, welcome. It's been fun. Thanks a lot. No worries. I'm going to finish the stream and we can have a very quick chat. But oh, Jim's probably going to leave. That's okay. Uh, I'm just going to press stop on my thing and we will uh, in YouTube thanks for watching anyone uh, and we'll catch you next time uh, yeah we're over here oh, yeah I'm gonna